All right, so now we're gonna get into the fan polled questions um, and see what people wanna know from you. Um, so first off, what are some lessons that you learned playing AAU that still apply to your career today? Uh, I learned that uh, basketball is a tough game. Uh, I learned how to fight through adversity. Um, you know, playing, you know, back in the day when I play AAU, we, I'm talking like I'm old, I'm, <laughs> but uh, uh, back in the day when we played, it was more along the lines of uh, we would play four games a day and as opposed to playing four in the weekend now. Uh, it would be sometimes six games, uh, depending on if you lost or if you, uh, you won. And, you know, some of those teams, like you posted, you were supposed to be the best team, better team, and then you had those sleeper teams. So, it, and that put you on the rope. And it's still, so you know, it taught me a lot about adversity and uh, continuing to work no matter what. And about adversity, we actually have a question around that too. Um, they want to know, how do you handle adversity and kind of shut out the negative noise? Uh, I, I mean, I just don't pay attention to it. I'm one of those guys that's real laid back and chill and uh, try to focus on the task at hand. Uh, my ultimate goal for going out of each and every game is to, to win basketball games, plain and simple. So my focus is, is winning that game at all costs and doing whatever it takes for, to help my teammates win that game. So I try not to, and try not to even think about that, but uh, it's also a way to kind of fight through it. And uh, when you hear negative talks, you, you, it makes you want to do better. You know, when, you, when you're a player, you had that drive and that fire. And if you, you love the game, you're as passionate about the game, then it shouldn't, it shouldn't do anything but spark a fire in you to, to go out there and want to do better uh, and, and want to change people's mindsets. And I think that's, that's why I personally think youth sports is so important because, yes, you could be the next Michael Jordan, but if you don't also have the mental part of the game that goes with it, you just can't go that far. You know, people are always yeah. – yeah, youth sport. I mean, youth sports for me uh, built a lot of confidence for me. Um, you know, I I was kind of like, well, I wouldn't say a late bloomer, but um, during my younger years where I was like 13, 14, and 15, I wasn't as good as uh, most of the guys. And then kind of like my 15 to 16 year old year, I kind of just jumped out there on the scene because I kind of had like a, a aha moment. Uh, and that aha moment was kind of like when I was at, uh, so I used to go and go to Mike Miller's house and uh, train all the time. And I was playing with those guys at his house and, you know, just playing at playing with playing against him and playing against some other pro players and stuff like that, college guys, and uh, being able to, to have that experience and then being able to, to fare well with those guys, it put me in a whole different mindset, a different space. And it gave me a lot of confidence and, and it just made it, it was like the aha moment where I was like, man, I really can do this. Like, I really can go to the league. I really can, can really like play with these guys. Like, like I can do this. So it was just like, all right, whenever I walk out on the court, I know I'm going out there and I'm trying to get 30. So, so it was just like, okay, like I, I felt like I got to a point where it was like, okay, like, like I know I'm going to get 30. Can you get 30 on me? So that so it, it so it was it was one of those mindsets where it was just like you know like I looked at it as like at the end of the day I'm trying to use this to to provide for my family and and do other things in life like I looked at it as like they were taking food off my table so and you're not just gonna let a man come to your house and take food off your table <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I had to start looking at it and paying attention to it and I still look at it to still look at it to the that look at it that way to this day like all the, like obviously you have a new wave of guys that's coming into the league but at the end of the day I, I pay attention to all those guys that's coming in from high school all the way, but like I do have an AAU program so I see a lot of these guys. <laughs> so in that and you being a late bloomer one of our questions was what advice can you give to a junior in high school and he doesn't have any offers yet? What would the best words for him? Uh, just continue to continue to play, continue to get better. Watch, and then uh, just uh, make sure when you're in like these AAU tournaments with the college coaches during the live periods, make sure you're you're going out there and you're you're showing them something that they haven't seen uh, in a long time from somebody like playing hard or you know diving for loose balls or uh, you know obviously all, a lot of the coaches want scores, but they need those in between guys too. Um, 
just, you know, just keep working and then, uh, and then make sure that you're putting yourself in a position to where, um, you can have resources or you can see the different, uh, coaches that's going to be out there at these live periods. Okay. And now let's get into it. Let's talk about your AAU team, um, kind of what you teach your players or what you kind of tell your coaches that this is the philosophy of my team and my program. Uh, well, so my AAU team is, uh, it has been around for about nine or 10 years now. And I mean, we've worked our way up from top to bottom. Like I didn't just get a Nike deal because I was a Nike pro player uh, signed under contract. So uh, with us, we kind of, uh, we, we, we instilled like how we kind of started our mantra was getting the guys that, that didn't have offers and getting guys who weren't ranked, but uh, just instilling them that, you know, to have a lot of confidence, uh, giving them life skills, and uh, just teaching them the the values and then providing the resources to where they can all succeed. And I think that's what kind of uh, clicked for us was we didn't come from an angle of we wanted all the five stars. Those kids are already going to college. Those kids are already going to probably be pros. Um, we wanted the guys that was that wasn't even ranked. That that was no stars. And and we wanted to be able to develop them and make them into potential pros or develop them and you know, we've been very successful over the past years, uh, past 10 years and putting, you know, probably well over a hundred kids into colleges and some sorts uh, from JUCO all the way up to D1. Uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, we have some pros um, that's, that's playing for us. And actually two of our pros are actually playing on the same team right now, OG Ananobi and, um, and uh, Terrence Davis. Uh, so and they play for the Raptors. So, so the, the the good thing is we've been able to put some guys into the league, and, and it, it's more pros than that. But those are just uh, two to name. And you know we've done a very good job with just uh, putting out a, a great product, uh, instilling a lot of confidence in our kids, and then taking them to the next level with our training and our resources. I mean, I've even got gotten a whole uh, facility now. Uh, we have two basketball courts where we kind of house our our um our operation as far as our AAU program but also we kind of run a business out of it also with uh my business called reform sports training and my best friend uh Norton Hurd he uh is the director uh, of the program and my father he kind of he's the co-director also that and they kind of run everything together uh, my father handles more of the financial aspect and and uh, the budgeting, and my best friend handles all of the recruiting and talking to the parents and the day-to-day -day operations. And uh, I think we've done kind of like a very good job. You know, now we're in a position where we just got a Nike YBL deal. And now we're, I mean, obviously, you know, we want to win now. We have to start recruiting the five stars. But we've, we've made our name off just building the program off kids that, that were one and two stars and, and moving them up to four and five stars. That's awesome. And for those that don't know, uh, where is Team Fab based out of? Team Fab is based out of Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. And speaking of Memphis, where would you go to get the best barbecue? Uh, I would probably go to get the best barbecue. It's, I mean, it's a few places now. They have a uh, central barbecue that, uh, that's kind of came in the past few. Uh, and ours has been around for a while. Uh, but I, I would say my, my, my most favorite is uh, Topps Barbecue. Back into basketball, what does it, one of our kids wants to know, what does it mean to have accomplishments such as Mr. Basketball, Tennessee Gatorade Player of the Year, and McDonald's High School All-American on your basketball resume to be that accomplished that young? Uh, I mean, it was huge for me because of what I came from. Like, uh, just like my story <clears throat> from, you know, how I kind of grew up, like uh, my parents, uh, you know, at a young age for me, uh, they both lost their jobs kind of at the same time. So we were forced to relocate. And that's actually how I got to Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I relocated with my sister. My mom uh, kind of split away from me. Uh, she went to Mississippi just to kind of get on her feet. And then uh, at a family reunion, we kind of linked back up. And then she, she came to Memphis with me. She said, forget it. I'm coming back with you. And uh, we kind of started staying with my, uh, my aunt. And then we kind of grew from there and went from there. And then now, uh, you know, going from there, like I started to kind of start getting into sports, 
started to do certain things. And my father moved uh, with us. And then uh, he started to work like two or three, two, two or three jobs. And just like I said, just the, how, how tough it was growing up for my family. Uh, I think that's kind of how like it, it put that mindset in me. Like I'm, I'm going to make it regardless of anything. And, you know, just from to see where I came from, like how we were essentially homeless, <laughs> being able to, to, to play basketball and get good and uh, go through middle school. My first middle school year, we only won one game. <laughs> and then my eighth grade year, we ended up being in the city championship. So just those two years alone kind of showed me the difference between losers and the difference between the winners. And obviously, you know, you having that, that that championship experience and championship feeling, you want to continue to do that, you know, no matter whether it's in McDonald's game or getting the Gatorade player of the year or being Mr. Basketball, like you always want to have that feeling. So um, those two years, uh, you know, in middle school kind of instilled that in me and then going from into my high school years where, um, you know, my high school coach, he forced me to play high school because he felt like I was too good for middle school. <laughs> and, and then going from there, it was just more along the lines of uh, the school was was uh, was eight and twenty three before I got there, and then me and a couple other my friends when we got on the team, uh, we went like twenty three and five and thirty thirty one and five and stuff like that, and just got better each and every year. And and then but. Uh, I learned a lot um, throughout those years. I learned how to play as a team, play as a, a team. I learned how to be a great team. I learned how to be a leader. I learned how to, uh, you know, just go out there and just have fun. And then all the accolades will come when you're having fun uh, and, and just working on your skill and working and working as hard as possible. Like that was one of the biggest things. I, I worked as hard as possible to to get myself to that point. And it was all being recognized through all those accolades. And what was the hardest part about recruitment in high school and the AAU period? Uh, the, 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 I would say the AAU period uh, was hard because uh, we were playing so many games in a day. Um, and, you know, you want to be at your best and at your peak level each and every day because, you know, you're you're fighting for scholarships. You're you're in in the midst of battle for uh, a college coach's attention. Um, and, and then another thing too, when you you become one of the cream of the crop, the target um, you're you're the target one. The target is on your back as opposed to you know you having you looking at the target on somebody else's back. So you know I think that's one of the things too that's very hard. And then uh, recruitment process was extremely hard because it's like, okay, which one is the right school? Like, who am I going to pick? Why, why, why would I pick this school over this school? Um, you know, just you know, those are the hardest things. And I and I always uh, I, I always said that that was like one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make because you know it was a, a lot of different factors and variables that was um, that was in that was in my college decision and. You know, it was just it was just a hard hard decision because it was like okay do I leave University of Memphis with legendary coach John Calipari and go somewhere else uh, you know do I go to Tubby Smith at Kentucky uh, you know do do I you know I I go to Arkansas where the whole town is dependent on me to come after Ronnie Brewer leaves uh, <laughs> uh, do do I go to Tennessee and and hurt Memphis heart you know what I'm saying and like go to do I go to Georgia Tech uh, just to get kind of get away and, and you know just in case basketball doesn't work out I have a I can I'll have a degree from one of the best schools in, in America Georgia Institute of Technology or do I go to North Carolina and you know and 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 go and play with uh, guys like Wayne Ellington, Taiwan Lawson, Brandon Wright uh, you know and and you know be a part of what the Tar Heels had, had done they I think they had just won a championship uh, right before that. So, and, and Roy Williams, obviously we know he's a legendary coach. Um, so a lot of different variables and a lot of different things that go on. And I kind of like uh, locked myself in a room for a couple of days before I made a decision and then actually ended up making a decision that I would, I would attend uh, the Georgia Tech, the Georgia Institute of Technology. And, uh, and that was uh, simply because I just felt more comfortable with, you know, the coaches there. I felt more comfortable with the players. Uh, 
felt it was the best opportunity for me to go and kind of be there and be me and get away from the, all all of the madness and and but still be able to be able to be able to come home uh, within a five six hours span. And if our athletes take nothing away from what you just said, other than the decision has to be for you, right? Is I mean the the decision making process is obviously it can be life altering and it can be uh, uh, career altering. You know, if you make the wrong decision, you know, you have some guys they make decisions uh, based upon uh, you know the the track record of the school, and, but the school may not be for them. You know, as a as an individual. And, you know, some people who make those decisions, they end up transferring or moving or going to another school. And then, you know, now, you know, your hopes of getting to the NBA, your hopes of doing something different, uh, you know, they start to dwindle down. And, you know, it's just simply because it's like, you, you kind of get lost in the shuffle. And, and that was one of the things that I didn't want to do. I didn't want to get lost in the shuffle because, uh, you know, my ultimate mindset was to, uh, either get a degree or potentially go into the NBA. And I was, you know, fortunate enough to go after being at the school 10 months. But, but uh, you know, I did finish my degree. I didn't finish at Georgia Tech, but I did finish my degree online. Um, you know, I got my business management degree. And then uh, I furthered my education and, and actually got my master's in uh, organizational leadership. So, uh, so it, you know, and, and that's all while I'm playing basketball. So, you know, it, one thing that can be said is that, you know, you can do whatever you set your mind to. You just got to put that time and effort into it. Well, congratulations on that. Those are big accomplishments. And like you said, Thank you. especially to also be <laughs> playing <laughs> basketball full time. That is amazing. Thank you. I mean, it took, it took me 10, 10, 10, 12 years, but, you know, got there. <laughs> it doesn't matter how long it took. As long as you cross the finish line, that's all anybody right. cares about. <laughs> right, right. So now let's get into how you train. Um, so a couple of our kids, both you and if you want to talk about the kids that are in Team Thad, um, how do you maintain your body? I mean, uh, so I'll, I'll kind of break it down in different segments. Uh, you know, uh, beginning in the league, uh, I'm in my 13th season now. Um, so earlier in the, in the league, probably like the first four or five, six years, I used to train like stupid hard, just like going to the gym, being there for four or five hours. But then I realized like, uh, you know, just training super hard for multiple hours, it, it can take a toll on your body. So, uh, and, I, and I'm playing so many games, like, you know, knock on wood, but you know, I, pro I played the most games in my draft. And, <laughs> and I'm almost close to like a thousand games. I think I'm like 40 games away from a thousand games from my career. So. You know, that's a big accomplishment within itself. Um, you know, so for me, it's more along the lines of, you know, how can I still get the same training in and play at a high level, but uh, be more efficient with it? And so what I started to kind of do was just kind of break my stuff down into segments where I might come in in the morning, get, you know, weights in and uh, cardio and, and lift in, do all my speed and agility work, and then leave you know, and go and probably grab a, a bite to eat, you know, um, you know, and get a little quick break in between and then come back to the gym and do skills and drills. And then, you know, after I do skills and drills, you know, I'll, I'll come back later on at night and get shots up, you know. So just try to, you know, not condense a three, four hour workout into a straight three or four hours, but break it up into uh, 45 to hour, hour long segments to where I can still get the same work in and still be highly effective. And I can get more intensity workouts in by not tiring myself out after, after being there for a hour. So started to do that kind of, uh, you know, as a, a, a great training regimen. Uh, obviously you got to eat well, um, you know, and, and I know everybody can't afford chefs and stuff, but you know, you got you to gotta eat well and uh, you got to take care of your body. Um, only put the good stuff in. Um, you know, and then for me, and then we try to break it down to where we're not doing as much impact on the body and doing more kind of like pool works and pool work, yoga and stuff like that. And uh, just making sure that we, we put ourselves in a, in a, I put myself in a position to where I can be sustained, sustained throughout the whole, 
uh, year. Um, you know, the good thing is I have been able to sustain throughout the whole year. I, like I tell my trainers and with uh, teams, like, look, I do all I'm working as song do, do as much on this. You know, um, and because a lot of you see a lot of guys they come up injured uh, during the season, but it's because they're putting in the same. They're trying to catch up as opposed to doing the work in the summer, and that's what that's what I use my summers to do. I use my summers to put a lot of work in and dedicate a lot of time into the gym and and making sure that you know I'm I'm ready, uh, not just mentally but physically. Like I always tell people, like, ain't nothing wrong with my <laughs> my mental capacity. It, it's all the the physical part and. If I can get that physical part down and make sure I have it down, then it's going to put me in a way better position to be sustainable throughout, throughout the whole season. Awesome. And what are your some of your go-to drills that you use to train either kids at Team Thad or you personally as a player like to do? Uh, honestly, I like for me, the, the, the best drills are like just all touch, all touch drills because it, it's about your, like your, your feel. Like for me, I'm a I'm a, a big feel type guy. So if I'm not feeling it, then I try to do rhythm stuff or stuff to get me back in rhythm to to get me back like feeling stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I know I can go out there and you know score 10, 12, 13 points a game. I've been doing it my whole career. That's that's easy, uh, <laughs> you know. So so for me, it's all about just keeping that same touch and then just continuing to work and. Uh, and, and do certain things that's going to keep me uh, at a place where I'm I'm uh, I'm able to be uh, consistent because that's one of the things that most people look for in the league. Like most GMs, they look for a guy that can be super consistent. Obviously, you want the stars and you want superstars, but you still need those guys who can be very very consistent. Uh, you know, I'm not a superstar, but you know, um, I'm a very consistent player. You know, I think that's why I've been around for so long and I've been. Uh, a part of uh, a lot of different teams and helped a lot of different teams, helped a lot of young guys because I bring that consistency. You know, I understand the game, I understand how to play the game through smarts and intelligence, but I'm also a guy who can go out there and, you know, if I need to step my game up, I, I can fulfill that role and that need uh, just simply because, like, I understand the game, I understand how to do it. But, uh, like, I'm always doing uh, little small stuff like hook shots and floaters and, uh, you know, mid-range jumpers and, and just working on uh, the touch from around the three-point line. So just all, like, touch stuff. Like, you don't have to work out uh, extremely hard, you know, to to be efficient. You know, it's it's about, you know, when that, that ball comes to you, you know, from the work that you put in before, the, the memory that you got before, or the repetition nature that you had, you know, transitioning it to the game. And that's what I try to do. I try to transition everything that I do. Um, you know, outside of the game to the game. Uh, you know, you know, yes, you know, you want to work hard, but it's 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 times for that. Like being in the league, like you can't go through every single workout like at a high intensity, a high intensity level because you know you're gonna wear yourself down and then you know you, you have to be able to play in these games. And sometimes people go down and when these people go down, minutes go up. So, you know, you have to be prepared for those situations this season is weird. Um, So it hasn't been a full season, but so far, how do you see yourself kind of fitting in with the Bulls style of play? Uh, I mean, the Bulls style of play is uh, slightly different than any other team that I've kind of been on. um, Mostly because, you know, um, what they've kind of, they've kind of done is they've kind of changed it to where uh, it's a lot of, uh, threes and layups as opposed to just having an overall game. So, um, you know, I, I see myself fitting in as kind of like the in-between guy who can kind of help get those guys the shots and kind of go out there and do all the dirty work. and be, But be also be able to still be out there and, and shoot some different shots and, and do some different things. We know, you know, being an athlete is more than just what you do on the court. It's how you balance the game. Um, your community contributions between your AAU team at the youth foundation and your personal time. I mean, you have a family, you're also a family guy. So how do you balance all of that? Uh, I mean, for me, I try to balance it uh, where I'm spending uh, a lot of time with my wife and kids in the summers. Uh, Obviously, um, you know, during the season is very hard because I'm on the road a lot, but 
the good thing is they have the ability to to travel and come out to games and come out and explore the cities. Uh, my kids have probably been to more cities than most kids uh, as far as, and then they've probably been to more children's museums than most kids because my wife, she's always uh, Googling the children's museum in every city that they go to and she's always taking them to uh, the children's museum and, and you know, interact with spots like uh, uh, Sky Zone urban air and stuff like that so they can have some, some fun time but uh for the most part i try to balance out everything uh across the board like i try to put time in with my my wife and kids i try to put uh time into the business side of things and then uh, obviously you know the time for basketball uh, which is going to practice and getting extra shots up getting extra work in and uh just making sure that uh you know i'm staying in you know uh, shape what would you like to say to any youth athlete um, about how to keep pushing with everything going on in the world today? I feel like our kids can use a little bit extra motivation. So what would you say to our young athletes? Uh, I, I think what I would say to uh, young athletes today is just to keep working no matter what. I mean, even with COVID going on, there's a driveway. You know, um, you know there's pay outside, you know, have a, you still in your garage, you still can, uh, you know, you know, we used to, we used to say, hey, you know, we're willing to train in any weather and, you know, kids can still do the same thing. You know, um, you know, I think COVID is kind of taking us back to the old fashioned ways of training where uh, a lot of the kids are outside as opposed to in the gym uh, with the gym being closed down. And now you're, you're, you're going back to, to the way that I kind of had to train you know, starting off outside on the pavement and uh, making my way to the gym as opposed to starting off in the gym. And, you know, doing a lot of the, the outdoor training uh, in the hot sun, uh, you know, and it, it tests your character, it tests who you are as an athlete, it tests your uh, adversity level, uh, and, and, you know, it, it gives the coach a chance to see how you fight through uh, those tough times. And, you know, I think this is definitely a time where, uh, you find out, you know, what kids really want it and what kids don't.